hip attitude out here, so you know, I, I acquired that into my rapping. Ironically, 20 years later, the music of the same hip hop artists who were influenced by these films is now having an effect on the way many black films are made today. And some have even made it to the big screen themselves. H U S C L E R Hustler. Hustler. Ninety-two just wasn't my year. Ninety-three will be though. You can believe that. <laughs> yeah. After two years of being the subject of numerous lawsuits, arrests, assault allegations, being shot at, and having his house burned down, Dr. Dre, now officially an ex-member of N.W.A., is reluctant to discuss any of those controversial incidents, even after appearing on the cover of the Source magazine in November, holding a gun to his head. The source cover. I guess that's how I felt at that time. <laughs> it was perfect, too, you know, the whole 92 was, you know, talking about Dre. It just kept my head above water until my album came out. You know, I was loving it. Currently, Dre's debut solo album, The Chronic, which is named after the street term for potent marijuana, is at number three on the Billboard pop chart. And the first single, Nothing But a G Thang, is starting to get national radio airplay despite its gangster rap edge. Cause ain't nothing but a G Thang, baby. Too low down G, so we crazy. Leaving N.W.A. behind, Dre started his own label, Death Row Records, and found a new partner, rapper and former drug dealer Snoop Doggy Dog, who he first teamed up with last summer on the Deep Cover soundtrack. He grew up with my little brother, you know, so, so he's been around. You know, I never knew he can rap. He could rap until maybe about two years ago. My little brother had a tape of him at a bachelor party. You know, we popped the tape in. <laughs> it was folky. People want to know about me because they don't know too much about me. They know Dre, but they, you know, it's like I'm a mystery. Dre, who grew up in South Central Los Angeles, got his start as a DJ for a glam rap band called the World Class Wrecking Crew. The group featured Yella from NWA, a group he co-founded and no longer associates with because of money and contractual disputes with former manager Jerry Heller and bandmate Easy e I guess they took advantage of me not knowing the record business back in the day. But you know, I know what's up with those numbers now. Can't be f***ed with. Ironically, original NWA member Ice Cube left the band for the same monetary reasons, and now Dre says the two one-time enemies may record together again. I'm doing a compilation album, you know, called 90221, and um, we're going to get together and do a song on it. Maybe me, him, and Snoop. We're trying to see if Ren is going to be down, but um, we'll see what happens. We're about to get Queen some wreck. When we start rocking, just rock where you are. Boom, bass, wake up, I set it off right. We're doing the big performance scene, which is just gonna be straight up me on the stage, kids rocking. That's it, with the record. Boom. This is how I'm coming. And this is where I grew up at. These are the streets I walked up and down all my life, and I still walk up and down. And uh it's just special to me. Even though LL Cool J reminisced over his roots by returning to Farmers Boulevard to shoot the How I'm Coming video, he says his new album, 14 Shots to the Dome, isn't trying to recreate the old school sound of his early hits, such as I'm Bad and Radio. The days of radio are gone. You know what I mean? This is, this is the days of 14 Shots in 93 in my album, and it's not going back. It's just more of a street oriented grounded group album. The new album includes a variety of musical styles, ranging from dancehall reggae to classical. Yeah, it's crazy. I have a song called Crossroads where I use a whole orchestra, and that is like a real, like, vibrant song that is full of positive aggression. 
It's been over two years since LL's last album, and during that time he's become a film actor. Last year he appeared in the movie Toys in a non-stereotypical role, which is the reason why LL says he took the part. I'm not going to run down the street with an afro on a television, you know, and, and be ridiculous and be deemed an idiot or ignorant. You know, if I'm going to do a movie, it has to be something that allows me to shine in a proper light and something that allows me to have dignity so that my community can have dignity along with me. At this point, we don't have that many black heroes. And uh, I wanted to play that hero for that hour and a half or two hours I was on screen because I thought it was important. But with a new album on the way, LL thinks something else is more important than the movies. My management told me that, you know, they received a few scripts and they're looking over some scripts. But right now, it's strictly music. This is how I'm coming. Everybody has a gun. The only thing a gun is is power. Rat tat tat tat. It's all an image. Guns are so influential in hip hop because they're readily available in the black community. Rappers are just identifying what it's what they've been brought up on. Violence is just seen as an acceptable mediator. Um, I think that hip hop has taken it and embraced it because you're dealing with like the least empowered group in the culture. Um, basically doing what the American culture, uh, pop culture to political culture embraces and says is okay. I got reasons for why I do the, the gangster imagery or the, ga the guns. It's, it's similar like, you know, like when you look at metal, metals use lots of skulls and people say satanic and all that, but it's not really, it's what white kids consider tough. If you show skeletons on a black album, you're scared of the kid. They're oh, monsters, you know, we don't play with that. What I'm doing is using hardcore imagery. My attempt is to get the kid who might want to use that gun to buy the album, and then maybe I can talk to him about it. What rap is, is, is reality, you know what I'm saying? And it, it explains and expresses what goes on in the streets. And it's like, you can't hide from the issue. Guns is there. Here is something you can't understand. Or can just kill man. I think you're talking about a group of people that do not feel safe who for 400 years have not ever felt safe in this country. Um, we're protecting our lives, we're protecting our emotional health, our mental stability, and um, we've chosen the country's most popular and quickest way to do that, so we pick up the gun. And they take talks and everybody runs. I wish I had time to count all my guns. I'm not down with gun propaganda. I think that we've got more wisdom and more intelligence and much better things to say. When we say gun, it don't mean maybe pull out a gun and shoot somebody. I'm telling you to get with me and get what I'm doing. And since I got my gun in my ear, which means you can give me my hand, my mind, or whatever I use, you know what I'm saying? Just get with this. You take any kid on the street and you ask them, uh, what, what does that song mean? Throw your guns in the air. They'll be like, take your, te take your tech nine out and shoot that in the air, you know what I'm saying? Buck, buck, buck. Rap doesn't exist in this, in this vacuum. You know, the people that are probably able to see the metaphor are probably people who have other very stable factors in place. Parenting, like if the schools are doing what they're supposed to do and parents are supposed to be doing what they're supposed to be doing and the government's doing what it's supposed to be doing, then you have children who have the freedom to interpret these symbols um, in the ways that they're intended. When rappers talk about guns, they're just expressing their feelings instead of going out and really doing it. So they have a way, it's like a way to escape from their problems. Yeah. Hell yeah. I think that rap artists and, and just singers are, are role models. And people look up to them or follow them. You know, if somebody idolizes somebody and they do one thing, then that person is gonna do it as well. You know, I'm not trying to be anybody's role model or anything like that, you know? I'm here to entertain, and that's it, you know? I'm not telling anybody to look up to what I'm doing or say what I'm saying or anything like that. I'm just looking to sell some records.
better have your umbrella, boy, because you're going to get wet. Onyx, a Jamaica Queens-based band who were discovered by Run DMC's Jam Master J, introduced old-school hip-hop fans to slam dancing and something they call the grimy style. We had the chance as De La Soul to bring something new. I feel Onyx bringing something new too, you know what I'm saying? They're real energetic, they got mad skills, you know what I'm saying? They scream so you can't miss their lyrics so it hits you right in your face. It's a privilege to be performing with Run DMC because as a child, those are my, you know what I'm saying, my heroes of rap, you know what I'm saying? They, they would start it and brought it to me. Just throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. And if you want to be down with the keys this week, everybody say, oh yeah. The crowd at the sold out show seemed to agree as they warmly welcomed back Run DMC during a 40 minute set, featuring old hits as well as new material off their upcoming album, Down with the King. Down with the King for years about time. We represent 10 years of hip-hop and rap and the whole thing, fashion, you know, we made fashion statements with Adidas, gold chains, the hat, so we kept, we, you know, we, we are the living, breathing, walking longevity of hip-hop. Two years ago, a friend of mine asked me to say some MC rap. Everybody scream! Boys against perpetrators! Yeah. You ride the gold act, keep the crowd cool. But Run DMC's 1990s effort, Back From Hell, was the biggest disappointment of their decade-long career. After three years of being out of step with hip-hop fans, there's now a newfound appreciation for these rap pioneers. Well, I guess the, the season is just, it's time for us to hit right now, you know? You know, it, um, everybody can't just keep going up. There's always some downfalls, you know what I'm saying? During that downtime, Run DMC experienced a series of internal problems, including drug and alcohol abuse. There was a time where D drank a lot of 40s and I smoked ounces of reefer. We don't do that no more, but we have never into heavy drugs, no way. Just because I was drinking beer don't make me a negative person, you know what I'm saying? That's just something I did. My body told me, yo, it's time to chill, so that's what I did. It actually, it had a physical effect on you where you ended up in the hospital, right? Yeah, but that was good because now I'm on a low-fat diet, I'm lifting weights now, and I'm eating right. You know, I'm before I drink a 40, eating McDonald's and not getting enough sleep. Now with renewed health and faith in God, Run DMC are touring the U.S. and are prepared to live up to all expectations. Who's The fate of nations, the title has sort of a sort of a political tone to it. Have you been uh, disturbed about what's been going on? The lack well, of... Kurt, it's not political. It's just um, just concern, just general concern about where we are and what we're doing about what we're doing. And I just thought it might be a nice idea to say. I'm aware of uh, a few problems here. No. And rather than just singing about the back seat of the Buick all the time, or squeezing lemons non-stop. Manic Nirvana was quite an aggressive, abrasive, agitated collection of songs. Um, but I don't feel quite as aggressive as I did then. So I can call it out. No, not well, no. Indeed, not only has Plant bounded back onto the scene, but so has his old Led Zeppelin partner, guitarist Jimmy Page, who's collaborated on a new album with longtime Zeppelin idolater David Coverdale, a man of whom Plant has pronounced himself anything but fond in the past. The inevitable Coverdale Page question, what do you make of it? Well, I don't know whether it's inevitable, because some people don't say anything about it at all. Well, I'm not one of them. But you're having a good time, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> the man's got integrity. He's a, he's a fantastic guitarist. And um, he has, he needs to play and he needs to get out and do what he's got to do. And I think that all this sort of talk about the way, all this kind of rivalry, doesn't matter. I've watched those vi that video and I think they're having a great time together. You're laughing at me because you think I'm full of... Hey Jim, I'm with you all the way, kid. Nice. 
After a quarter century in the rock trenches, Plant tends not to take the music business all that seriously, especially such laughable phenomena as what he calls...